Hello everybody. Welcome to this lecture about focused assessment with sonography in trauma or extended fast. The main goal of fast exam is looking for free fluid in the peritoneal space and the pericardial space. With time, researchers found that ultrasound is very accurate in looking for lung injuries, so the goal was extended to look for pneumothorax and hemothorax. EFAST is an essential part of trauma care. It is considered as a primary survey adjunct, mainly to detect injuries to breathing and circulation. There are other applications of ultrasound in trauma, but these are not within the scope of this tutorial. Before we talk about ultrasound, let us review some tools that we have to evaluate a trauma patient. Physical examination. Physical examination has many limitations. It is not sensitive or specific in detecting many injuries, especially in patients with distracting injuries or low mental status. Diagnostic peritoneal lavage. Although DBL is still an option for many institutions, it has many disadvantages. It is an invasive tool. DBL is not specific. It tells you there is an injury, but it does not tell you which organ has been injured. It does not detect retroperitoneal injuries. And of course, it doesn't detect pericardial or lung injuries. CT scan is a very accurate tool to detect many injuries, but the biggest disadvantage is the need to transport the patient outside the emergency department and the time needed to perform the study. As you know, unstable patient shouldn't lie on the CT table. Ultrasound has many advantages, but also some limitations. It is accurate in detecting free fluid. It is a portable diagnostic tool. It can be done very quickly. It is non-invasive. And unlike CT, it has no radiation. On the other side, ultrasound has some limitations too. Ultrasound does not tell you the type of free fluid. Of course, in the trauma setting, we assume this free fluid is blood till proven otherwise. The goal of EFAST is simply detecting blood in the three main spaces, the peritoneal, pericardial, and pleural spaces. In addition, evaluating the lungs for signs of pneumothorax. FAST exam is useful in other non-trauma situations, such as ruptured ectopic pregnancy, ruptured ovarian cyst, or finding ascites. Remember, fluid will appear as a black stripe within the ultrasound image. Here are the steps for extended FAST exam. Start in the right upper quadrant area looking for hemoperitoneum. Since the probe is already on the right side, slide it upward looking for right hemothorax. Move to the left side and do the same. Look for hemoperitoneum in the left upper quadrant. Slide the probe upward and look for left hemothorax. In the suprapubic area, look for free fluid in the pelvis. Then move to the subxiphoid area, look for free fluid around the heart. Finally scan the anterior chest wall in both sides, looking for signs of pneumothorax. Low frequency, curvilinear and phased array probes can be used to do the whole EFAST exam. For pneumothorax, high frequency linear probe is preferred since we are looking for the pleural line which is a superficial structure. But if the linear probe is not available, curvilinear and phased array probes can be used. Now let us discuss all of these views one by one. In each single view, we will talk about the technique, the normal findings, and the abnormal findings. Then at the end, we will talk about some important points that we should pay attention during this exam. The right upper quadrant view. Place the probe in the mid axillary line at the level of the xiphoid process. 
Keep the marker towards the patient's head. The points of potential fluid accumulation are between the liver and the kidney, what do we call it, the Morrison pouch, between the liver and the diaphragm, the caudal tip of the liver, and the inferior pole of the right kidney. Evaluate these areas by using anterior to posterior sweeping motion. This is the image that you should see. You should see a coronal section of the right upper quadrant area. The probe marker towards the patient head. So this side towards the patient head, this side towards the patient feet. This is the diaphragm, this is the liver and the kidney. These are the spines. The areas of potential fluid collection are between the liver and the kidney, between the liver and the diaphragm, the caudal tip of the liver, and at the inferior pool of the right kidney. This is an ultrasound clip of the right upper quadrant. Here we don't see any free fluid in the following areas, between the liver and the left kidney, between the liver and the diaphragm, at the caudal tip of the liver, or at the inferior pool of the left kidney. This exam is negative for free fluid. Notice the nice anterior to posterior sweeping motion to evaluate the whole anatomical space. Clip number one is a normal right of our quadrant exam. In clip number two, you can see an echoic black stripe which represents free fluid in the Morrison's pouch and at the tip of the liver. This is an example of positive fast exam in the right of our quadrant. This is a 26-year-old male who presented to the AD after a motor vehicle accident. You can see a small area of free fluid collection at the caudal tip of the liver. If we scan only the interface between the liver and the kidney without paying attention to the caudal tip of the liver, there is a good chance that we may miss this significant finding. So always make sure you include all the areas of interest, not only the interface between the liver and the right kidney. This is an elderly female who presented to the emergency department two days after a fall at the ground level. We did fast exam in the right upper quadrant. We can see here a mixture of fresh and clotted blood at the inferior tip of the right kidney. This represents a positive fast exam in the right upper quadrant. If the ribs block your view, rotate the probe slightly clockwise keeping the probe marker towards the posterior axillary line. In this way, the probe will fit between the intercostal space. Always fan through from one end to another end to make sure you scan the whole anatomical space. Fluid-filled structures such as gallbladder, renal cyst, and IVC may look similar to free fluid. Always fan from one end to another end and follow these structures carefully. Free fluid appears pointy. This is in contrast to other rounded structures. Perinephric fat mimics hematoma, but this fat has some echogenicity and it does correlate with fat tissues in other areas in the body. The right pleural space. Since the probe is already on the right side, just slide it upward. Keep the probe in the coronal orientation with the probe marker towards the patient's head. Look for an echoic black stripe above the diaphragm. Another way to tell if there is free fluid in the pleural space is by looking at the spine's sign. In normal patient, spines are not seen above the diaphragm because air in the lung does not transmit sound waves. If there is free fluid in the pleural space, spines will be seen above the diaphragm. This is the image that you should find in a normal patient. We don't see any anechoic black stripe above the diaphragm. In addition, the spines stop exactly at the level of the diaphragm. This exam is negative for free fluid in the pleural space. 
This is another example of a normal exam. Again, we don't see an echoic stripe in the pleural space, and the spines stop exactly at the level of the diaphragm. In this clip, you can see obvious and echoic area in the right pleural space. Also, the spines continue above the diaphragm. This exam is positive for right pleural effusion. Club number one is a normal exam. In club number two, it may not be easy to tell if there is free fluid or not, but you notice is that the spines continue above the diaphragm, which indicates the presence of free fluid in the pleural space. Ultrasound does not differentiate between the blood and other types of fluid, such as empyema or fluid secondary to congestive heart failure. In trauma patient with positive free fluid in the pleural space, it is reasonable to assume this fluid is blood till proven otherwise. A spine's sign could be positive in other lung pathologies, such as pneumonia or lung contusion. The left upper quadrant. This view is usually more difficult to obtain than the right upper quadrant, because the spleen is a smaller acoustic window than the liver. Place the probe in the coronal orientation with the probe marker towards the patient's head in the posterior axillary line. To avoid the rib shadows, slightly rotate the probe to fit in the intercostal space. Look for free fluid in the following areas, superior and lateral to the spleen, and also between the spleen and the left kidney. Fan through these areas, anterior to posterior, to evaluate the whole anatomical space. This is the image that you should see. Here is the spleen, the diaphragm, the left kidney, and the spines, which appear as a hyperechoic structure further away from the probe. In this clip, we can see the spleen, the left kidney, and the diaphragm. We don't see any black stripe around the spleen or between the spleen and the left kidney. This exam is negative for free fluid in the left upper quadrant area. This clip shows free fluid around the spleen and between the spleen and the left kidney. This is an example of a positive fast exam in the left upper quadrant area. In this clip, you can see free fluid between the spleen and the diaphragm, another example of a positive FAST exam. The probe may be rotated slightly clockwise so that the probe fits obliquely within the intercostal spaces. Free fluid usually accumulates superior and lateral to the spleen, not between the spleen and the left kidney. The left pleural space since the probe is already on the left side, evaluate the left pleural space for free fluid. Look for an echoic black stripe above the diaphragm. In addition, look for the spine's sign, as we explained it before. In clip number one, notice that the spines stop at the level of the diaphragm. This rolls out free fluid in the pleural space. In clip number two, the spines continue above the diaphragm, which represents pleural effusion. The suprapubic view. Obtain both transverse and sagittal views. Place the probe in the midline, just superior to the pubic bone. Keep the marker towards the patient right in transverse view and towards the patient head in sagittal view. Fan through the urine and bladder to fully evaluate the anatomical space. These are the images that you should see in transverse and sagittal views. This is the urine and bladder and this is the prostate. Look for an echoic black stripe outside the urine and bladder. Notice that the prostate is an extraperitoneal organ, so in transverse, 
if all what you see is just a slice through the prostate, there is a good chance that you will miss intraperitoneal fluid. It is crucial to do the sagittal view to call the exam negative. This is a sagittal view of the urine bladder. You can see an echoic black stripe which represents free fluid outside the bladder. This exam is positive. This is a transverse view which shows free fluid outside the bladder. Notice the importance of fanning through the bladder from one end to another end. Here are the transverse and the sagittal views in females. The uterus is posterior to the bladder. Free fluid will accumulate behind the uterus in the pouch of Douglas. This is a sagittal view. Notice the anechoic fresh blood mixed with clots in the pouch of Douglas. This is an example of a positive fast exam. This is a transverse view of the uterus. Notice the mixture of a fresh and clotted blood in the pouch of Douglas. Another example of a positive fast exam. This exam is useful even in non-trauma scenarios, for example, to look for ruptured ectopic pregnancy. This exam is better done with full bladder because we use it as an acoustic window. The subxiphoid view. Place the probe in the subxiphoid region with the probe marker towards the patient right directing the probe towards the patient head. The liver is used as an acoustic window in this view. Hold the probe from the top so you will be able to decrease the angle between the probe and the skin. Starting from the near field of the image, the structures that you should see are the skin and the subcutaneous tissue, the liver, and the heart. The heart chamber that is close to the liver is the right ventricle. So this is the left ventricle, right atrium, and left atrium. Normal bercarium consists of a single hyperechoic white line surrounding the heart. Bercarial fluid will appear as an echoic black stripe within this line. In this view, we can see an echoic black stripe between the parietal pericardium and the cardiac muscles. This is an example of pericardial effusion in the subxiphoid view. Subxiphoid view could be difficult or could be uncomfortable for the patient in many situations. So feel free to do other views, such as the personal long axis view. In this view, Place the probe in the second to the fourth intercostal space, just beside the sternum on the left side, with the probe marker towards the patient's left hip. Let us review the orientation in this image. The probe marker towards the apex of the heart. This is towards the apex. This side towards the base of the heart. This side is anterior and this side is posterior. The most anterior chamber is the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. This is the left atrium. This is the LVOT and ascending thoracic aorta. This is the pericardium and this is the descending thoracic aorta. Pericardial fluid appears as an echoic black stripe around the heart. This exam is positive for pericardial effusion. In the personal long axis view, the left pleural effusion looks like pericardial effusion. Pericardial effusion is anterior to the descending thoracic aorta, while the left pleural effusion is posterior to it. In addition, always do the left upper quadrant view to find the left pleural effusion as we explained it before. This is another example of pericardial effusion which is anterior to the descending thoracic aorta, and the left pleural effusion, which is posterior to it. In the subxiphoid view, 
increase the image depth because the heart is far away from the probe. Sometimes you need to slide the probe to the right to avoid the air in the stomach on the left. If possible, you can ask the patient to inhale which will bring the heart close to the probe. Even small amount of pericardial blood could cause pericardial tamponade in the setting of trauma because it developed very quickly, while patients with chronic pericardial effusion could tolerate much larger amount of fluid. Pericardial fat pad looks like pericardial effusion. Fat pad has some echogenicity. It is not in the dependent area and mostly seen in obese patients. Looking for pneumothorax. The high frequency linear probe is preferred in this exam, although you can use other types of probes, but always decrease the depth because we are looking to the pleural line, which is a superficial structure. Place the probe in the mid clavicular line with the probe marker towards the patient head. This is the image that you should see. Here we can see the upper and the lower ribs and rib shadows. The pleural line is the hyperechoic line just posterior to the ribs. The main sign to rule out pneumothorax is the sliding movement in the pleural line. Normal lung sliding means there is no air between the visceral and the parietal pleura. Other signs are the comet tail artifacts, which are vertical lines arising from the pleural line. These comet tails also rule out pneumothorax, but sometimes they are not obvious. During mainstream intubation, the lung sliding is decreased in the contralateral lung. In these situations, identification of lung pulse rules out pneumothorax. Lung pulse is a pulsation movement in the pleural line. It represents cardiac activity transmitted to the lungs. This sign is useful to roll out pneumothorax if mainstem intubation is suspected. In the mood, a granular pattern will appear below the pleural line. This represents normal lung sliding and rolls out pneumothorax. But in most cases, as long you see clear pleural line sliding, you didn't need to run a moot. The signs of pneumothorax are the absence of lung sliding and the absence of comet tail artifacts. In clip number one, we can see nice sliding movement in the pleural line and comet tail artifacts. This rule out pneumothorax. In clip number two, we don't see sliding movement and we don't see comet tail artifacts, which indicate the presence of pneumothorax. The motion mode will show a barcode pattern, which indicates the presence of air between the parietal and the visceral pleura, as compared to the seashore pattern that we saw in the normal lung. Lung point. Lung point is the transition between the normal lung and the pneumothorax. Here you can see one area with a sliding movement and one area without a sliding movement. This sign is very specific for pneumothorax. If you run a mode in this area, you will see alternating seashore and barcode patterns. The summary. You can start with any area, but it is reasonable to be systematic in this exam. Start with the right upper quadrant area. Look for an echoic black stripe between the liver and the right kidney, between the liver and the diaphragm, at the caudal tip of the liver, and at the inferior pole of the right kidney. Then look for free fluid in the right pleural space. Look for an echoic black stripe above the diaphragm. Also look at the spine's sign. In the left upper quadrant area, 
look for free fluid superior and lateral to the spleen and the interface between the spleen and the left kidney. Keep in mind here, fluid usually accumulates superior and lateral to the spleen rather than between the spleen and the left kidney. Then evaluate the left pleural space. Look for free fluid above the diaphragm and look at the spine's sign. Then evaluate the suprapubic area. In females, fluid usually accumulates behind the uterus in the pouch of Douglas. In males, fluid usually accumulates posterior to the bladder. Then use the cardiac views to look for free fluid around the heart. Then evaluate both lungs for signs of pneumothorax. Thank you.